let's look at how modern yoga looks at uh, asanas. Uh, when you tell somebody, I practice asana, immediately the next question is, oh, you must be very flexible. Mm. Or you say, why don't you come for my yoga class? Mm. So they'll say, oh, but I'm not flexible. Yeah, very common. So there is a common definition now that yoga means flexible. And even it is taught as flexibility training. Mm. But traditionally, it is much, much more than that. Traditionally, it is number one, the science of becoming self aware through physicality. Okay. So, when you practice asana, you become aware of your breath, you become aware of the sensations, you become aware of your limitations, physical. So, one hour of practice will make you more self-aware. It's a first process of bringing the mind in from out. Okay. Secondly, the use of breath as conscious movement. Not just movement. Not just, hey, okay, let's do 12 sun salutations. Go. No. Let's do 5 sun salutations. Doesn't matter if it takes half an hour, but every inch you move, move mindfully. Because like I said sometime before, that it is an introductory stage of bringing the awareness in. There is out, there is body, and there is in. That's why I said it's a door. Body is the door to inner universe. Ideally, what's the tendency of the mind? To get distracted externally. Outward absorption. Yes. Yeah. Outward addiction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at us. Look at us. And now with the mobile phone and everything, mm. our awareness is constantly outside. Mm. Nobody can sit still. If you take a ride uh, in Europe or America, you take a ride in the in the trains. Nobody is just sitting. Mm. Nobody just sits still and looks out of the window. Everybody is either engrossed in the book or playing on the phone or listening to the mm. music or uh, if somebody is just sitting like, imagine you are on a, in, a, in a train in America, Europe or wherever and somebody just sit, sit, just sitting like this with a nice smile on the face. You will not sit next to him. You will say, he's some crazy man. Right? You will say, oh, who's that weird? Yeah. But you will sit next to somebody who is playing on the phone or reading a book. That's very normal. That's normal. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But ideally, how? I mean, we don't know. Maybe that man who is just sitting and smiling is sitting with such a deep contentment mm. that sitting next to him for your little five station journey will give you so much peace. Mm. But how does your mind perceive him? He's a weirdo. Maybe he's drunk. Maybe he's high. Yeah. Oh, no, I will avoid him. Mm. This is what has unfortunately happened to us. That our mind and senses are too externalized. And this is where asana can play a huge role to really bring back the humanity towards, hey, look here. There is something that you have that's called a body. Right. There's something that you have that's called breath. And you know what? You can, you can modify your breath. You can control it. Do you know that? Mm. Sometimes I feel ridiculous as a yoga teacher to teach people how to breathe. Something so so basic. So basic. I mean, I mean, not even like some advanced pranayama. Mm. What am I teaching? Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And after five minutes, people say, "Wow, that was good." And in my mind, I'm thinking. Hey, what did I just do? I just taught you to, I didn't even teach you. Mm. I just made you breathe, which you were doing anyway since your childhood. Mm. But you're not aware. Yeah. So, the asana practice, so even to certain extent, pranayama practice, primarily is a practice of bringing the mind inwards. When the mind comes inwards, then we realize that, wow, I have a body. Wow. Something called as a breath. Wow. Something called as sensations. Mm. Wow. There is there's something here. There is an organism inside me. Mm. I'm alive. Wow. 
it seems that becomes the first step to being able then to um, learn how, because if you can, just to use your breath example, when you become aware of your breathing and you change your breathing by, by your own conscious choice, you also change your feeling. Yes. And when you change your feeling, things look different and suddenly your perspective changes. Absolutely. And I suppose it's really the same thing uh, throughout the whole yoga process as you go in deeper, becoming more deeply aware of subtle, subtle realms where you do have actually some ability to relate, control, sure. to be, and to change your own perception and your own. Yeah. See, ultimately, if you really, really look, we all live in our own little bubble. And whatever we see is our own, is what we want to see. You know, for example, uh, there are 10 people on a street and an accident happens. And then the police comes and catches those 10 people for witness, as witness. Then the police comes to one man and says, what did you see? So this man will say, I saw a white car. Other man. What did you see? I don't. I didn't see anything. I heard church bells. You know. So, or somebody else. What did you see? I saw a man wearing a black jacket running away from the car. So what just happened? The police interviewed three people and asked them to describe that one incident. And three of them described the incident in their own way. An accident happened in front of this guy. The only memory of that particular moment that this man has is of the church bells going on at the same time. He did not see anything. He is ear dominant. Mm. Some other guy was eye dominant. He saw the white car. He did not hear the bell. So he, if, if the police comes to the, the car guy and says, did you hear church bells? I don't know. If he goes to this guy, did you see a man in the red jacket, a white, black jacket? Not sure. Mm. This is how we all live. Mm. We all live in our own little bubble, mm. wanting to see only what we want to see. This is what yoga calls as limitation. Right. We write basically we, we write narratives around those limited exactly. amounts of our own perception. And uh, to the degree we become attached to those, that, yeah. that controls our possibilities then. Let me make it a little more complicated. Yeah, yeah. We don't write. <laughs> the narratives are written. Maybe you can expand on that a little bit. <laughs> the narratives are written means, for example, last time, remember the last time you were angry. Mm. You were angry or anger came out? Mm. A general person would say, anger came out. Were you aware? Uh, when it came up, when it was coming, I was aware, but I did not know what to do. Or jealousy. Last time you were jealous, what happened? Oh, it came up as a wave. From where? I don't know. Mm. This is why I wanted to correct you when you say, narratives are written by that something within us that we yet do not have conscious control. Mm. This is, as Bhagavad Gita says, we are asleep. We are not awake. Narratives are being written through us and realities are being created around us and we have no conscious control of it. That's why we end up in situations we don't want. If we were so clear about what kind of life we want to create, we all would have created beautiful lives for us. But we don't see that happen. That's because we are all majority still living a life out of something something deep that we have no awareness of. And this whole process of yoga is about first come to your body, then through the body, find out that hey, who is working through you? The ghost in the machine kind of. Thing. Tom says, I am living my life. But most of his actions are out of impulse. So who is living his life? He doesn't know. That's that's the that's the equation. That's the mystery we have to solve.